Sweet Home Santa Barbara, where the skies are so blue. Sweet Home Santa Barbara, what's worked for me can work for you. Well, welcome back, friends, to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Robinson. I'm with my friend and realtor, Scott Williams. Hello, Jonathan. Good to see you, Scott. In this session, in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the front of the house and kind of do a, a top 10 list of the most important things to think of, uh, reviewing some of the things that you talked about and some new things. Uh, when we talk about the front of the house, what's the first thing that pops into your mind in terms of, of what people should be aware of and most concerned about? Well, the most important thing is the color of your home. We know from various ways of testing this that the overall color and condition of the paint is the most dominant feature of a home. And you don't want certain colors because they will actually devalue uh, the price of your house, right? That's right. And the, uh, another way to look at this is if you are a buyer shopping for a home and you come across a home that otherwise seems like it's a good home to you, but it's painted blue and you're just a little bit put off by that, you're in good company. Most people are put off by blue. It's the most common color that we come across that is hurting the value of a property. Yeah. Sometimes that you see houses, you go around neighborhoods and you see a house that's a real off color and it could be a great house, but it's like, oh, yuck, I, I couldn't buy that. If they sold it to me for 10 bucks, I think I'd avoid it. That, that's true. That those, those sellers are losing money uh, with their orchid house or their fuchsia home or the, you know, the pink home. All of those are costing them. Yeah, yeah. So what else, um, before we go into our top 10 list, what else occurs to you in terms of the front of the house that people need to be? Very well, can you see the house? Is the house, does the house pop out at you? A homeowner may want to sort of conceal the home from the street, but a buyer wants to pull up and go, oh, that's my home. And so they want to see it. Yeah, you know, some of the things that might work for you as a homeowner, like, you know, privacy and big bushes and a, a blue home or whatever it is, don't work when you're selling your home, basically. Yes, this is the, your home is your castle up until the time you decide that you want to market it. And then marketing ideas like we're talking about. Uh, if you want the most money for your house, then you need to think about these. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the good news is that there's a lot of things you can do for under $100 that make a huge difference, which gets us into the top 10 list. And I think we're going to start at number 10 in terms of things that things people have to be aware of when when marketing their home. So what's number 10 on the top 10 list? Number 10, and some, if they're less than $100, I'll, I'll mention it, um, that you're going to trim the trees to show your house. We were just talking about that. Um, that's sometimes a little bit counterintuitive, but that, that's the first thing you want to do is like open up the view of the house. Right. Uh -huh. and unfortunately, that can cost a bunch of money. So that's why it's number 10, probably. What's number nine? Number nine is clear the path to the front door. There's probably some sort of pathway that goes between uh, the street or possibly driveway up to the house. We want to we, we want to move all the bushes and shrubs out of that pathway. Anything that's hanging down over that, make it easy if people can walk side by side. We want to them to be able to do that. And we want it very clear where we're going to. The, the target is the front door. Yeah. You know, when you walk into a house and it's clean, it's a very different feeling than when it's, you know, there's stuff all around. And probably the same is true when people are walking from the driveway to the front door. They like that clean look. Yeah. We, we, if you remember back, we talked about there's a meter that sets in people's minds as they arrive at the house. Is this leaving the front, uh, the, the front of the house where you're parked and walking up to the front of the house itself? This is when the meter is running. This is when their internal clock is saying, I like it, I don't like it, or how much they like it. All this is setting right now. Yeah. We have to pay attention to that. That's going on. Uh -huh. Okay, what's next on the list? Well, if you're living in the house, you know, you're present, 
then we're going to want to have a bowl of flowers at the front door. And that's going to include a yellow flower. We call that temporary yellow. It kind of sparks up the front door as you go on by. This is certainly under $100. If you are in a vacant home, we will we'll be foregoing this because there's nobody that's going to water it to take care of it. Right. Okay. That's pretty easy to do. And it's interesting that uh, that's been shown to actually have a big return on the investment. Yes, yes, it, it, it is studied, actually. Um, the number seven is the entryway flooring. We're, we're, we're kind of getting inside the front door here, but this is the location of the probably the finest flooring in the house. Uh, sometimes uh, people will have carpet that'll come right up to the front door, um, other times not. But we want to think about that, that uh, probably... The, the entry area of the house. That should be the finest floor surface in the home. And probably clean that area up pretty well. I know my entryway always has little things uh, that I'm going to take to the car and such. Uh, so clean that as well as have uh, nice flooring. Yeah, you, we, we are going to, we are going to declutter and uh, can't, you can't live in your home the way you normally live while you're up for sale. Yeah. Right. That, those habits have to go during the marketing. Right. What's next on the list? Uh, let's see. We're moving to the doormat. Right out there as you pull up in front of the, the doormat. I tend to prefer and like the doormats that come from Ikea over Home Depot or Lowe's or some of the more normal places that you get them. But you want them to be a high quality mat that fits the size of the front door and should not have lettering on it. Shouldn't say... Um, you know, I, I'd rather be camping or some, any other choices that you might make to make it, make it plain, but nice and brand new. Okay, good. And are we up to number five now on the list? I think I believe we are. The number five would be the mailbox. Now the mailbox may be out at the road or up at the house. Um, but generally it's best to buy a brand new one. Mm -hmm. Again, it's less than a hundred dollars, but it's part of that you know, the, the meter setting of how much they like it. So go ahead and buy a brand new, um, a brand new mailbox. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, what's number four? Uh, number four is the light fixture at the front door. Now there's a certain um, co coherence or con congruence of all, all these things that are around the front door. We want them to all be the same color. So if it's the mailbox, it's the front door. And some of the things that we're, we're talking about, the the light fixture at the front door here. We want them to all be oil rubbed bronze or they're all going to be brushed nickel or they're all going to be brown or they're all going to be black. We want them all to match because you, normally you would have gone to purchase these at different times at different stores and they may not be matching. That's a common experience as we check on a home that's going up for sale. We want them all, all to match. As, that makes sense. It gives set. it a good clean look. And what's number three? Okay, the doorbell switch. Um, and as opposed to the four or five, six, seven dollar doorbell switch that they might have at Home Depot, we go over to Capital Hardware and we spend 17, 18, 24, 32 dollars for a doorbell switch that would be um, emblematic of a five or $10 million home. That's the picture you want to have in your mind. If you had a $10 million home, what would your doorbell switch look like? And you would buy a very nice one. But it, right. it's hard to get past 30 or 40 dollars for the nicest one that you can buy. Yeah, yeah. So it's, and, it's not if you, and if you don't have a $10 million home and you have a $2 million home, you still might as well spend 30 or $40 because it gives you that classy look. That's correct. Um, and the, the next one, our item number two would be the house numbers. That's in the same sort of category. Instead of $2 or $5 or $9, we, we spend two or three times that amount to buy really nice, you know, very heavy metal, five inch um, numbers that are really attractive that you could put out on your gate of your $10 million house. Right. That's these would go up at the front door again, matching all in color, but let's, while we're talking on house numbers, there's one other location or two other locations potentially for house numbers that you might be putting new ones. One would be out on the mailbox. If you have your mailbox on the street, you would again buy maybe not five inch, maybe three or four inch, but on the post or the mailbox, you would be putting very nice house numbers and you need, may need to put them on both sides 
of the mailbox out there, but very nice ones, brand new to go along with your new mailbox and maybe even the new post or the new paint that's all out there in the mailbox. And sometimes um, people need to have more than one set of numbers on their house. Um, people who are coming for the first time need to feel really comfortable that they're at the right place. Uh, some of our areas like Montecito and Hope Ranch do not have for sale signs. And we, it, we, it, it, it's okay to cover that really well. Yeah. Sounds good and smart. And last but not least, number one thing to be aware of is. Okay. The front door color. Um, we know from studies that the best front door color that produces about a 1% increase in the sales price of the house is black. You may not have a house where the black will work. It does not always work. But some, we oftentimes then will switch to a, a color that stands out like red, occasionally yellow. Um, sometimes we take the trim color of the house and take it to a very, very dark shade of the trim color. It may not be black, but it may be a, an umber brown, like a burnt brown, burnt, you know, a dark color. Um, a very fresh coat of paint or stain makes a big difference at the front door. So that's our wrapping up our top 10. Well, that's great. That's a lot of information, great information. And something I appreciate about you, Scott, is that you help people with this or you give them the opportunity to say uh, you can work with them at a discount rate and just sell their house quickly without working on their house. And that's that correct. choice is really nice because in different environments, different uh, markets, Sometimes people just want to sell their house real quickly without working on it. And sometimes uh, they want a bunch of work and increase the price before they sell it. We'll, we'll go into that in depth because that's, that's where some really main choices need to be made by people. Uh -huh. Well, it's great that you have that flexibility. We look forward to catching you on the next episode of Sweet Home Santa Barbara. So if people want to get hold of you, Scott, what's the best way for them to reach you and contact you? Well, Jonathan, the name is Scott Williams, and the email is scott at scottwilliams.com. And you have a website as well. Scottwilliams.com. That makes it easy. Great. Well, uh, we look forward to having you at our next episode, friends. And uh, till then, enjoy Sweet Home Santa Barbara. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app. If you know someone preparing to sell their home, please tell them about the podcast. Visit scottwilliams.com to contact me and download the two free e-booklets, Is My House Saleable Now? and How Not to Buy a Money Pit. Thank you for listening.